What's up people, it's the Zigman and I thank you for watching today's video which I will be discussing 10 tips and tricks to earn more HT. Let's dive a bit deeper, but before I dive in, if you find value in this channel, be sure to give it a like and subscribe, and check the links in the description below as they'll help you out with what you may need. The very first thing you should do before getting a miner is to scout your location using the Helium Explorer. Here we can find info that helps assess how much a miner could earn in your area. We can see what others have made within the last 30 days. We can also see the area's reward scale, which determines how much you can earn from others around you. If you live in an area that's saturated with other miners, or if your reward scale is very low, you might want to consider hosting your hotspot. You can host your miner at a family or friend's house with a better location. Or you can go to Helium's Discord to ask any question to the community of miners who have amazing discussions about everything Helium. Under the host matching tab, you can find a host or become a host for someone else. In which case you might also want to get a smart plug. Smart plugs can be a saving grace because they allow you to remotely control the power of your device. Turning it on and off can generally fix most issues with the hotspot. Smart plugs work great for those who host their miners as it eliminates the need to travel physically to unplug the miner. Elevation. The highest rewards go to those who provide the best coverage. So the higher you can get your antenna, the better. It also helps if your antenna has a clear line of sight with other hotspots. Trees, buildings, and other obstacles all have an effect on your signal and can reduce the amount of witnesses you get. All coax cables have DBI cable loss, which refers to the amount of power loss over a coax cable's length. A short cable length is ideal in your setup. The shorter the cable between your hotspot and its antenna, the better your DBI strength. Hardwiring or physically connecting the ethernet port is a great way to maintain sync with the blockchain. Hotspots that use Wi-Fi instead will sometimes fall out of sync directly affecting your h &T rewards. This mostly happens with one gigabyte models like the older Bobcat 300. Using PoE or power over ethernet is a great way to eliminate the need for long coax cable runs. A PoE splitter provides electric power along with data on ethernet cable. This allows a single cable to provide both data connection and electric power to your hotspot. With PoE, there is less coax cable loss because it allows your miner to get closer to where you will mount your antenna. Upgrading your antenna can earn you better rewards. I recommend researching what antenna DBI works best for your setup. Lower DBIs work best if you're in a city or if you live in an apartment with people above and below you. The higher DBIs have a narrow, more focused long range. This is ideal for locations with secluded miners who want to reach miners across a lake or a tree line. Only buy your antennas from reputable vendors such as McGill or Rack Wireless. The cheap ones on Amazon often have problems and can be unreliable. Using a short, low loss LMR cable will help maintain a good DBI strength. A DBI calculator tool can determine the amount of power loss a cable loses over its length. When ordering a cable, keep in mind the port or connectors for both the antenna and the hotspot. My Linkstar and Bobcat 300 both have an RP SMA male port. My Rack 5.8 antennas have an N-Type male connector. I ordered a cable with RP SMA female to N-Type female connections. These connections could change if you decide to use a lightning arrestor. My friends, if you found this information useful, be sure to like and subscribe and leave some feedback in the comments below. It's greatly appreciated. And as always, happy mining, my friends.